Alright, welcome back. This time we move on to Sonic Boom, which was released in October of 2009, and KISS records their first studio album with Eric Singer and Tommy Thayer as the new Catman and Spaceman, which, personally, I don't mind them being the new characters, and uh, I guess there's really no point in complaining anymore since, uh, you know, K KISS is done now. There's been a lot of things that have happened uh, in between these videos. Um, uh, KISS retired, uh, so they say. Their last concert date was uh, December 2nd in New York City. But then now there's going to be this new era of KISS revolving this uh, avatar, AI sort of visual projection that like you would go to a concert and like you receive the band through this you know 3d holographic projection them doing a concert i, I guess uh, uh abba's done it um in which uh, i've heard a lot of fans that go to the abba re uh you know, avatar projection concerts uh, really enjoy it so uh well we'll see what goes on with this one i know the uh <laughs> you know the reactions have been pretty mixed uh, personally it wasn't on my bingo card um uh, i was uh, quite shocked but i guess i shouldn't say surprised um I was actually expecting KISS to either do a uh, KISS endorsed or KISS approved uh, uh, con uh, uh, tribute band that would become the new KISS or uh, uh, actually my other thought was perhaps Gene Simmons was going to start this TV show it's going to be like America's Got Talent but they're looking at various rock bands they perform and then they audition and the winner becomes the new KISS that that was kind of what I was thinking not not this avatar stuff but hey man I, i'll reserve judgment we'll, we'll see how it goes right um but yeah like i said with uh with eric singer and tommy there i don't mind them donning the characters uh i know with you know with ace when it got, came to him either being late to concerts or skipping out on concerts you know tommy there had to uh don the spaceman suit or costume and then uh at one point because i know it was in a, a documentary where ace uh, walked up to, and then he saw Tommy and, and the Spaceman costume, right? The character. And then Ace just goes, Oh, hi, Tommy. You know, so it's like, he kind of like, he, he knew he fucked up his second chance right there, you know? Um, uh, and, you know, I suppose if, if there's really one person that really has a say in it as to what they think, it will be Ace Freely, right? Um, and, you know, Peter Chris revolving the Catman. He who famously left the uh, the farewell tour. Uh, Eric Singer came in to replace, but then Peter came back during like the Alive Four era, and then left again this time like for good. And then Eric Singer came back, so he's like his third stint with Kiss, and you know, officially the Catman. And uh, guys, personally speaking, uh, as someone uh, who has seen both Kiss and Ace Frehley live. I would take Tommy there over Ace Freely in a heartbeat. Like, <laughs> like no, no, no disrespect to Ace Freely, but I just think from 2000s onwards, uh, Tommy Thayer has become uh, a better Ace Freely than Ace Freely ever could have, uh, at least in the the Kiss realm of things. Okay, now that I pissed off most of you guys, let's get to the actual album, Sonic Boom. What do I think of it? Uh, well, besides the atrocious album cover, right? Uh, I think this record kicks ass. Uh, uh, super underrated, if you ask me. Uh, I was expecting a uh, tired-sounding kiss, you know, trying to recapture the glory days of the 1970s. But no, they really deliver here. Uh, you know, while it sounds uh, definitely that 1970s simple kiss style, I, I don't think it lives up to to those earlier records, uh, but I don't think they were trying to, though. Um, you know, I, I believe that they uh, achieved in this creation of a Kiss-sounding record that anyone that listens to it can immediately point to and say, that is Kiss. And uh, again, I was very, very pleased with this album. Um, even though they no longer pursued a, a different uh, styles or, you know, sounds and return to a comfort uh, food level approach is what I talked to about Psycho Circus, how, you know, it's kind of a back to basics. There's not really going to be anything majorly different. We're, we're going back to the, you know, same old shit, right? But at least they do achieve in that remark, and I was quite happy. Uh, this should have been the Psycho Circus, right? Because I think that this blows out Psycho Circus. Uh, there was only like a EP, uh, an EP's worth of material on on Psycho that I liked, but this one through and through, <laughs> I I definitely enjoyed it. Yeah, Sonic Boom, not bad.
To start off the album, we have the song Modern Day Delia, a good song to start it off. Uh, it's a track you would expect Kiss to create at, at this time in their careers, along with, like I said, the back to the basics approach they are doing. Uh, things are very tight, instruments definitely on point, the uh, various backing vocals that chime in make for a welcoming taste, and uh, you know, as for Paul, give him credit, you know, I, I, I forgot to say this in the intro, but you know, uh, his singing... It ain't at the quality or capability that we were used to. You know, time is definitely shown on here. The constant touring, the, the years of wear and tear on his voice, it, it's caught up to here. Uh, I don't think it's bad by any means, but it definitely is different, right? Uh, but, hey man, for this one, like I said, I, I think they really knocked it out of the park with Modern Day July. I, I can easily see it being on one of their earlier albums. It, it's catchy and tight. There's well crafted rhythms and arrangements and like I said uh, very uh, very uh, synonymous with an early kiss material simple yet effective um there was an there was an interview I saw a while ago I, I can't remember where it was Howard Stern or something uh, or maybe it was like Howie Mandel's podcast but um like uh, Paul Stanley was like oh yeah this is like one of our best songs or like most you know recent songs uh, I just think it's amazing but you know, we don't play it live because the fans, you know, they, they don't want to hear it. I'm like, oh, that's a load of bullshit if you ask me because you guys just do the same set list year after year after year. So you can easily put these songs in, you know. It was like, uh, I think it was when I was doing the Alive Force or maybe Psycho Circus. I don't know. There was a quote by Paul Stanley just like, oh, we, we've become prisoners to the same songs, the same set list. I'm like, well, that that's a... That, that, that's a you problem, you know? Like, you guys are the ones doing the exact same set list. You guys can easily change it, right? I, I don't know. It's like, stuff like that. I'm like, really? Come, come on, come on. You know, but anyways, Modern Day July, really, really good. As for Russian Roulette, a Gene Simmons song through and through. Between him and Paul, uh, I do think he has the better sounding voice, which just makes sense. You know, Gene was never like Paul when it came to singing, uh, but like I said about Modern Day Delia, uh, this song carries that classic era kiss. There's the uh, love and sex storyline. There's the temptation of want and lust, but you can't touch. Uh, the chorus is quite well done. Just the variations of pitch and tone I really like. And man, you know, <laughs> Gene knows how to knock out those ah ahs we heard it uh, on, on psycho circus I, I did talk about that how i really uh love that part in there uh and um you wanted the best right uh it, it's a little detail but but those things really do stand out for me good guitar playing as well as the solo the song is just uh, full of swagger and attitude they they know what they're doing obviously and you know listening to this uh, you can just tell that it, it came pretty easy for them with the song never enough uh i'm sure practically everyone who uh, first listened to the song went uh hey that's the song nothing but a good time by poison right um you know this uh definitely does harken back to what i said about the song uh, dreaming off of psycho circus shit man is this about sonic moves it's about psycho circus right but like i said revolving dreaming and how it was uh, very similar to alice cooper's 18 um uh, Yo, Kiss has enough songs in their catalog to uh, make an entire LP of songs that uh, sound like other songs, right? This this one's no exception. So while Poison's stuck in your head as you listen to this track, uh, it, it can really make it seem like a throwaway or be rather dismissive because of it. Uh, but that's not how I am, obviously. You definitely hear that. But I do find it to be a catchy song. Uh, again, like I said earlier, a uh, simple yet effective approach really works here. Uh, uh, many of the lines start with the word uh, gimme and, and follow with either uh, life, love, or rules. The the excitement in Paul's voice accompanied by the uh, guitar playing in, in a pattern that reflects the way Paul sings. It makes it really enjoyable. And you know, I find it interesting that, uh, <laughs> that this was released as a single because I think the dominant reaction would be like, Ah, uh, this sounds like poison, you know? <laughs> I, I, I think uh, maybe like Danger Us uh, should have taken its place, but nonetheless, uh, I find Never Enough to be pretty catchy. For the song, Yes I Know, Nobody's Perfect, this song rules. There is so much sway 
energy and tongue in cheekness. Every second is fun, you know, for the story. It, 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 it's that time of the night to get it down. Uh, Gene's saying uh, he knows he's like all the rest. Nobody's perfect. Uh, but he, hey, man, he, he comes awfully close, though. And uh, uh, this this might seem kind of weird, but I love the line, flip a coin, is it heads or tails tonight? I don't know, just, just the way he sings it. And also, it just really embodies a, a lyrical line you would have seen them craft back in the 70s. I don't know, just something about that line I, I really do enjoy and you know the uh the short stuttering nature of the chorus it's a nice touch uh it does add to the story and emotions that are circulating within the characters and eric and tommy they're great on here not to mention gene uh, the energy and performance of this piece is on point with the song stan let's see if i can say this without cracking my voice <laughs> i think i've done that twice now i don't know but with the song stan it's a song about paul and gene uh just being together for decades and uh, having each other's backs whenever they need it, you know, uh, f friendship all the way, right? Uh, now, I would say <laughs> this song can kind of feel like uh, Ball and Gene are pampering or blowing each other, but it is a song that I like. Uh, I appreciate how the song is structured, having Paul and Gene trade vocals uh, and the chorus really does have a soft pop feel to it. Uh, the bridge very soft sounding, uh, almost reminiscent of the bridge in uh, God Gave Rock and Roll to You 2. It's an easy going song and one that can be applied to anyone with a best friend. As for Hot and Cold, this is a rocking song. I love it. Gene really nails it here. Just that classic sounding 1970s rock and roll chorus is super catchy. It's a song that, uh, quite frankly, based on the album cover, uh, can easily fit on rock and roll over, you know? It's just that uh, straightforward story of having a love partner, you know, with, with, with polished and professional graded sound and production. It's a bonafide Gene Simmons song that you would have heard from him in the mid-70s. I, I think this is great. With the song All for the glory. Well, I'll be damned. We get to hear Eric Singer sing on a Kiss album. Uh, we never heard him sing when he was on Revenge and Carnival of Souls, so this is very welcoming. Uh, song definitely carries a, a, a Peter Chris structure that, that, uh, that uh, mean streets, uh, paving your way, uh, paying your dues, rising to the top story. There, there's a grinding, uh, hard-nosed attitude towards it, and that the band chanting, uh, we're all for one and we're all for the glory is rowdy. Uh, I would have liked it if they would have replaced some chorus sections with verse sections because this track is uh, rather heavy on the chorus, but I find this to be a very decent song. As for the song Danger Us, this is one of my favorite songs on the album album. Everything is rocking. I I like the word playing of danger you, danger me, danger us, and the lines were like TNT, like the dynamite. Uh, just the way that the band comes in is seeing the line uh, double down tough in the chorus. Neat addition. I really like that. Uh, instrumentally, man, things are on point, and Tommy puts out a killer solo. And with, with, uh, with Paul's rocking attitude and the band replicating that feel, it really does make it for a sweet listen again i i, I would have uh, i would have added this a, as the single uh for this album as opposed to never enough I, I think it's quite good and again one of my favorites on this record with the song i'm an animal my favorite track on the album this is such a killer song you know, talk about mean sounding very heavy in your face guitar is just head banging gene sounds menacing as all hell totally lives up to the name of the song you know you get the picture of this uh monster set on terrorizing the streets they really nailed it here everything is in full swing it give you a doomy mean and heavy sound as for the song when lightning strikes the first time hearing tommy thayer sing lead vocals on a kiss song and uh i really do enjoy his voice uh lightning totally strikes on this song though it's very electric uh, lots of arrangements instruments and backing vocals happening here there is an excellent guitar solo that totally shreds it's a perfect song for the spaceman character there's a lot of edge here and i, I saw a comment that i kind of agreed on was that uh if it was ace really singing this it would be considered the best song on this record but since it's tommy singing uh it gets rather dismissed and uh I really do understand why someone would be critical of this as, you know, it's an Ace song all the way through, um, without it actually being Ace, you know? <laughs> but, uh, as well, you know, if you still have the character, 
then you're gonna make a song like this, you know. But you know, like I said, I, I really, I really do understand where people that are critical for the character stuff comes from. Trust me, I, I totally get it. But as for just the song "When Lightning Strikes" in itself, uh, I think this song really rocks. To end the album, we have the song "Say Yeah." I think this is a perfect tune to end this record. It's a uh, very catchy. It's upbeat easy to sing along to. They actually did play this when I saw them live and it was really fun because the entire crowd was shouting the yeah yeah parts and you know Kiss once again they crank out an anthemic tune that's easy to dance and sing to. Uh, it's like a different take on Shout It Out Loud. It's the simple yet effective uh, you know a, a sing and dance like approach. Um, you know it carries the same uh, high emotions and atmospheres that you do get on Shout Out Loud, but just replicated into this track, Say Yeah. And again, I think that this is the perfect song to end the album. All right, there you go. Let me know what you think about Kiss's album, Sonic Boom. <laughs> I'll be curious what you guys think about this. You love it, you hate it, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time for the final album in the Kiss discography, unless if they go full AI and we get like 20 Kiss records after it mod monster of it just being robot singing. Uh, who who know who knows what the future holds for this band, right? For the the new era. But yeah, one more though in the in the studio discography. So I'll see you guys then. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and take care.